Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This has been your true and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, where last time, bloody hell, bloody hell, with Sweden's help, we actually managed to succeed in smashing into Mercia, and it didn't quite go as I expected, because let's talk all about the things that John got wrong. Everyone's favourite game show hasn't been around for a while. I think I've actually been doing pretty well, but... Yeah, I um I slightly misunderstood how the claim system worked. Uh, because, well, in all fairness, this is mainly a case of, hey, John, have you considered possibly reading the flipping tooltips? Because it does actually tell you. So, uh, yeah, there's a difference as to whether you're pushing someone's claim who is of your dynasty versus you're pushing someone's claim who isn't of your dynasty. So, let's have a look. See, let's try and find an appropriate example here. So, Prince Ida of Denmark, who is married to Sulfur. Sulfur, however, very tragically is. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Actually, did you manage to die without having any children? Oh, you died without having any children. Right, we're going to have to get you flipping remarried, because that would actually be useful. Yes, she's got herself a weak claim on the Kingdom of Denmark. So, in theory, because she's actually within my court, I can push that claim for her. But that doesn't mean I would just get Denmark like I've just got Mercia. Because there are certain rules, and yes indeed it says it right there in the flipping tooltip. So if King Hector of Cornwall holds a higher tier title and is of the same dynasty of Princess Ida of Denmark, or if King Hector of Cornwall is the day you're a liege of the Kingdom of Denmark, then Prince Ida of Denmark will also become a vassal of King Hector of Cornwall. So she actually fails both of those criterias. The thing is, I'm a king, and if I actually push her claim on Denmark, she will become the king, or well, she'd become the queen of Denmark, but basically she'd be running a kingdom. Now, according to the laws of feudalism, a king can't manage another king. Only an emperor can manage a king. So as a result of that, she couldn't work for me anymore. And in addition, she is not of my house. She is of the house of Estrid. We've got another claim over here, however. Yeah, Dumban's claim. He inherited a claim on the Duchy of Essex, from, I believe that was from his mother, right? No, that'll be from his father, in fact, who is married matrilineally. So he's inherited that claim. So his claim on the Duchy of Essex follows the same rules. So if I hold a higher tier title and I'm part of the same dynasty, or if I was the de jure liege of the Duchy of Essex, then he would also become a vassal of me. Now, the second criteria I do not meet. I am not the de jure liege of the Duchy of Essex, but there's two different ways of doing it. The alternative way is, yes, I need to hold a higher tier title, which I do, I'm a king, and the thing I'm trying to push on him is a duchy, and he is of the same dynasty as me. So basically, if I were to actually push the Essex claim, then yeah, I could actually just hand him the Duchy of Essex right now. He would then become a Duke of Essex reporting in to me within England. However, this is kind of stirring up a hornet's nest, because remember, I've had an easy time taking back Wales because I had de jure claims on Wales. England now has de jure claims on Mercia, and if I were to push this on Essex or on York or all the rest of it. The Duchy of... Ooh, I could also take that as well. Duke Hellfire has more claims I could try and push, but at this point, yes. People are going to start thinking less of me because I am unfortunately a bit of an oath breaker. So let's go over here. Opinion of Hector. Broke a truce. Minus 25. But only for eight years. Because yeah, I think I broke it two years ago. So I assume that's for 10 years. Now that, that's interesting. Though actually he's, sorry, title claimant. What title are we after? Oh, right. Yes. Um, so, I may have made some slight tactical errors in my marriage game, which is, sure, I managed to briefly acquire non-aggression pacts and alliances with France, but because I married a bit too closely to the king himself, this guy, who is the child of, I assume, who are you actually the children of? Yes, you are actually the child of Helen of Virch Iliad. Unfortunately, he's actually managed to inherit a couple of claims on Cornwall itself and on Brittany. Luckily, they're weak claims, so I need to make sure I never have a child on the throne. Otherwise, the King of France has the right to say, well, I'll be having all of this right now, and uh, there's not much I could do to him at the minute. And how's the epidemic going? 
Honestly, it's not looking so bad. Uh, yeah, Cornwall just because it's so prosperous is super vulnerable to epidemics, but we haven't had an event forcing us to open the gates yet. We'll be fine. Now, I've made a decision, ladies and gentlemen. A pretty major decision. I'm not going to war again. Not for a while. Seriously, I am done with war. Just apart from the Crusade. The Crusade is... Wait, what happened to the Crusade? Oh, did I miss the Crusade? I think I missed the Crusade. It doesn't look like I missed the Crusade. The Crusade... Well, something's still going on. Hello, Mr. Pope. No, no, it does look like the Crusade's still going on. I'm going to join that, because that's not really a war when you think about it. That's just a really useful way of getting yourself some nice free Crusader traits, which would be very, very useful indeed. There we go. The banner came back. Beautiful. And... Ooh. Hello, Duke Godwin the... Right, who's just offered to... Have you just decided to basically buy your own way out of jail? Marvellous, congratulations. Wait, how many other people are currently in my dungeons? I should probably check that and then release all of you. There we go. The Pope's on board, great. Oh no, never mind, there's no one down there. There are two known plots... And honestly, neither of them is particularly of interest to me, and they're not going to go anywhere. So screw it, I'll just let those be. So yes, indeed, we are winning pretty handily, and that is... Uh, oh yeah, 10,000 odd troops going on here. Oh, but there's, there's 15,000 over there. I thought this was a done deal, guys. I kind of thought I was joining something that was definitely a done deal. Also, bloody hell, the Byzantines are making more progress. They're actually taking more of... Southern Italy right now. They're taking all sorts of stuff off the Sicilians. Amazing. Oh, speaking of Sicily, Sicily are having a bad time of it. Once upon a time, they held all of this and all of Southern Italy and Sicily itself. Now it looks like they're in the process of flipping falling apart. Oh, you poor things. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, the rebels are going to win. But unfortunately, they've cost Sicily a fair bit of land in the meantime. Right. What else do we have down over here? Some good empires. Forming up over there, forming up over there. Do I actually want to send troops to this? Is there any purpose of me actually, you know, sending troops to help out the Holy War? Because there could be. Who's actually involved right now? And what's happened recently? Quite a few defeats, as it turns out. But most of our victory is coming from occupation. I could send troops. No, no, I'm not getting involved. I'm not getting involved. I want to see what's going on, and I want to actually send my king over there just so he picks up the traits. I think the trait is worth like plus one or two. Oh, blimey. My diplomacy is not great right now, though that is actually partly due to seclusion. Yeah, I wouldn't mind picking up the trait. I'm going to send him over there. It's going to be beautiful, and then we're just going to come straight flipping back. Tiny force, and no, no, no. I've allowed him. He can do it now. It's fine. Oh, wait. Of course I can't because I'm currently secluded. Yes, I see the issue there. But they're going to just teleport to my army. So I may as well just send my army. I'll join up with them later. This is literally all I'm sending, by the way. There we go. 200 men on five ships. Get aboard and you just basically head over towards the Holy Land. Let me know when you get there. And then we'll just very quickly pick up the Crusader trace. And it's all going to be marvellous. And I'm assuming I'm going to pick it up if I just basically arrive inside the official De Jure Kingdom of Jerusalem. Because, yeah, I can't actually besiege the city of Jerusalem because that's not in the hands of the people we're at war with. So I'm just going to basically show up to wherever looks quietest, do a bit of besieging there, then immediately go home. Now, something new. You are threatening. So threat at 9.7, monthly decay 0.27. So this rate, 35 months decay to zero. Effects of threat. With over 5% threat, that's me. Other realms can form defensive packs to protect themselves from you. Each religious group has their own separate defensive pact, while only defend members belong to that same defensive pact. And then, okay, the others are way, way, way higher. So we don't need to worry about any of that. But as your threat increases, larger and more distant realms might get involved. Alright, and then they'd be forced to leave again as my threat reduces, and one of the things my Chancellor can do is force my threat down, which I've got them doing for the time being, because I don't like the idea that England might be able to form any form of pact with anybody. In fact, though I feel quite sorry for England. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how this guy's ended up doing so flipping badly. He's just managed to get himself, yeah excommunicated and uh, he's called the ill ruler he owes money secluded he's stressed he's cruel he's arbitrary he's craven this guy started off at the age of 18 
as an ambitious genius who was married to... Ooh. Was that your first wife? I swear that wasn't your first wife. Maybe it was. But yeah, I honestly don't know how you've managed to get an ambitious genius who's this poor at Marshall. Because if he'd just managed to like get himself up to, say, 15 or 17, I doubt I would have been able to win any of the wars I've just won. It's mainly just been taking advantage of this bastard. And I can't imagine, no. His own vassals flipping despise him. Thing I need to do at this point. Yes, I know I'm threatening. I'm not opening the gates, not until the disease is definitely cleared out. I need to revisit all of my children and figure out if it's time to name a young kid, even if they're not the best candidate, as my heir. Because at this point, I could basically set myself up to inherit Scotland. In fact, it would be very, very simple indeed. All I need to do is pick this guy right now as my heir and then basically somehow engineer for my current king to die. Like, for example, ooh, there's a nice crusade going on right flipping now. I'd start playing as this kid. This kid would become king and obviously, you know, he'd... Well, he wouldn't give up this earl... Earldom? Earlet? Earl... Whatever the thing for an earl is. A county. He wouldn't give up this county. But he'd come and be king, he'd probably bring that county with him, just as what's happened with the Duchy of Mercia around here. And then, when his actual uh, king up here does eventually pass on, under the rules of primogeniture, all of Scotland moves into his possession. Which will be fine, it will be just like the time I was simultaneously the king of Brittany and the king of Wales, uh, previously under the era of, I think that was... Uh, was that under Iliad that we actually had the two kingdoms simultaneously? I think it was. So then, I would actually have, well, I'd have two kingdoms, and I could create a third very easily. And that's the point where we can start thinking about having an empire. And wouldn't that be exciting? Yes. Yes, it would. So, I need to go through all of my children, because I've been seeding claims and dynasties all over the shop. My dynasty is spread all over very, very nicely. And some of my dynasty members might have really exciting claims. Because if I could get my next king to have a claim on, say, the Kingdom of Denmark, I could basically just go over there and conquer those bastards. When I say I could do that, I could do that if I was capable of pulling it off, which with Swedish help I might actually be able to. Yes, they don't seem that strong at all. So, let's actually have a recap of the entire dynasty right now. Starting at the far right of the dynasty tree, the line of Hal, the satanic bastard who just refused to flipping die via the original Uslas. So, Cadot II is currently, of course, filling a very important role. He's actually one of my dukes. He's decided to get married to someone. No children just yet, so no need to worry about them. Stronglass, of course, actually is married to... Yes, that's the son of the Italian prince I brought over to be steward and has two bastards and a whole bunch of children, most of which obviously belong to the satanic Connor, now sadly departed. So these guys are not relevant to me, but the others are potentially of interest. And in particular, we need to keep an eye as to whether there are any that are looking promising. So any of these children look good. Not mine is actually not bad at all, actually. She's she's pretty decent. I should probably just get her married, see if we can get her producing children, because that's some um, good stats and traits. Tragically, though, it's going to have to be a normal marriage. Matrilineal would be internal only. But there is a fair bit of interest in her. Oh, yeah. Grand princes and kings and chieftains, blimey. Remember, of course, there's basically no point marrying her for claims because it's not matrilineal, so the claims will actually stay outside of my dynasty. So, not that useful to me. And I also can't marry her off for non-aggression. She's not close enough related to me. So, honestly, she's not going to do me much good here. In fact, the best thing I could probably do for her is just find someone who I could invite to my court and then command to marry her matrilineally. Might be a decent way of getting a claim if I happen to feel like I needed one into my dynasty the following generation. So just focus down to men who are not married, who want to come to my court. Then just arrange them by culture and we'll see what we can find. You'll do Prince Rolf of Sweden. Alright, who might be able to actually pass on a weak claim on the Kingdom of Sweden. Inheritable. Yep, let's get that in the family. Lovely. Right, and the others are still children. Too early to tell what's going on with them. But we do have Attractive on one 
and strong on another. So keep an eye on the children of Strong Lass, because the demonic hellspawn of Connor might well prove to be of use to me. Let's just wait for you to rock up, by the way. And welcome, my good man. Welcome. By the way, you're getting matrilineally married. Screw you. Oh, and speak of the flipping devil, apparently there was a defensive pact against me. Oh dear, but it's now been disbanded, or at least part of it's been disbanded. This, this is worrying. Right. Potentially, some people are starting to get scared of me. Yes, but the threat is starting to evaporate right now. So, okay, this is worrying. Right, keep it moving on here. So, insult one of the other children of the original useless. So, Uslas the second, and the child... Ah! Now, this child's interesting. This child, if I'm recording correctly, yes, this child is heir to the petty kingdom of Kanakta, which is part of Ireland. So, keep an eye, potentially, on that area, because, yeah, if he turns out to be really, really strong, I know it's a bit of a waste, but if he was my next king... This bit of land would just basically move harmlessly into my territory, which is, you know, not exactly a major win, but it would still be a nice to have. And as for Uslas the second, who was actually very briefly, uh, actually no, technically she is still the Tanist. Uh, we need to find a good husband for her. Now he's getting on a tiny bit, and he does have club footed, which is a shame, but there is a Danish guy who comes with a claim to Denmark. Though, admittedly, I'm going to have plenty of people of my dynasty with claims to Denmark coming in very, very soon indeed. I don't think I need to breed any more of those. You know what? She might theoretically be leader one day in the event of a sudden death. Let's just get her someone good. There's a quick guy here who's 21, shrewd, ambitious. Yeah, good stats all around. Welcome aboard. You can marry her. And while we're waiting for that, more defensive packs are forming. Okay, so, yeah. A defensive pact is starting to be drawn together, and this worries me a little bit. County of Dublin. Alright, so some of the small Irish factions are starting to be scared. There's this guy, though, so let's just quickly arrange a nice marriage with useless for you. Matrilineal, please. Thank you. I can either help myself to a pile of money or some prestige, because yeah, this is a big deal because she's the Tannist. I'll take the money. I feel like we need the money. In fact, actually, you know what? I do need to build... A one thing in particular, I need to build a new uh, temple. Now, it could be anywhere, and if I was going to build something new here, I'd probably want to build a new city for more money. So, yeah, there's loads of space around here. I'm actually going to build a new temple, and I'm going to deploy you to oversee construction of that temple, please. So, hurry the hell up with that. Now, Prince Hector's own children are a bit young to know what's going on yet, though. Stronglast II is, of course, actually betrothed to a prince of Sweden, so that she can actually, yeah, get that alliance sorted out to potentially gain some more lovely, lovely traits passing through. Everyone else too young to tell what's going on yet, with the exception of Scandal, who actually lives abroad with, yeah, Duke Caddock, even though Duke Caddock is not his father. But he went to go and live with his mother, fine. Helen obviously left the dynasty, and that was not matrilineal, so none of her children are going to count for anything. Andromache has three children, including one that is actually quick, very, very good indeed, but... Yeah, too young to really know what's going on with them just yet. Now, the legitimate children of Connor. These guys are interesting. So, Princess Margaret of Cornwall was, of course, yes, was married to the poor last remaining member of John's line, but he died under suspicious circumstances, probably murdered by her, quite frankly. Meredith's already off in France, that's absolutely fine. Maridot is still a kid, but actually is betrothed to potentially become, yeah, the partner of the Queen of Denmark, which is very, very powerful indeed, so that's nice. Mistake is unremarkable. Disaster is, well, he's got good stewardship, but other than that isn't very much. We should probably just marry him off to start him producing children. You know what she'll do? Content, Midas Touch, Temperate, Chase, Gregarious. Shame about Chase, but Midas Touch offsets that. She'll be a perfectly decent wife. You just get married. Let's just make sure everyone's married that needs to be. Now, this side of the family's been a little bit on the neglected side. Because, yeah, now we're actually diving back into Caddock's side. So, uh, let's dive down into the line of Rio. Who, via Margaret, yes, and then Augusta, we had Priam. 
who ended up vanishing without a trace after we slightly sacrificed him to Satan. And as a result of that, perhaps understandably, yeah, all his children basically fled. And though they're still part of my dynasty, they're not in my court. They were taken away to safety. So, uh, there were three children that came out of that. Sarpedon, Aeneas, and Briok. Let's just go and see what they're doing right now. Sarpedon is just... Yeah, he's just chilling out inside the, uh, the county of Buchan. Ah, yes, of course. They were up in Scotland. They were up in Scotland, where they still are. So, he's just in that court, doing nothing of any note. He's got himself engaged to a woman who is... Uh, Okay, if not spectacular. He himself is not exactly desperately remarkable and also has two children who are potentially okay, but they're not really old enough to know. Aeneas, meanwhile, is... He's located in... Ah, he's actually located somewhere else. He's located inside the Duchy of Moray. And you are... Ooh, you're the spy master of Moray and a commander, and also heir to potentially a very small little local bishopric. Okay, well done. So Aeneas has actually made something of himself. He's travelled far from home, but built something new for himself, which is, you know, quite appropriate for someone called Aeneas. And finally, Briok is currently, right now, another spy master. In fact, actually, Okay, I mean, you're okay, you're not exactly spy master material, but what have you. And this guy is also a spy master of Clydesdale. Alright, so that is nice. It's nice to know you guys are all just getting along. Looks like none of you have actually picked up any interesting claims or anything, to be honest. So let's not worry too much about you. Now, here's the big one. Slow, who of course was sent over to Scotland and married King Colin the Usurper, or rather married him and then we put King Colin up on the throne. So as a result of that, while a bunch of children have died, a couple more have come of age and have also got... Oh! Oh, you sneaky bastards! So, basically, King Colin is actually plotting against me, because King Colin is part of this house, and he's spotted that his children are stuck being part of a different house, so now he's matrilineally forcing my sons to marry while they're in his court. Okay. Oh, well, that's just fascinating. So all of them are stuck in matrilineal marriages. So now the children that come out of that marriage are not going to be of this dynasty anymore. Okay. Well, this is just flipping great. Any chance I can actually arrange a nice marriage for you with one of mine? No, I've not got any good appropriate people floating around anymore, unfortunately. We'll just need to keep an eye on you. But yeah, this guy is the heir to the Kingdom of Scotland. And he's of my dynasty, but his children aren't going to be. So if we were to choose to make him the heir and play as him, we'd need to potentially... Oh dear... That's no good at all. That's no good at all. Right. We need to move things over. What do we need to do? If the King of Scotland were to die, and he were to become king, and then we were basically just to arrange for his wife to die, and then as a result we could just remarry him to someone else, or if they just didn't have any children and thus his brother inherited... Potentially, ah, but he's sick. Fatigue, frail. Yeah, the problem is there's a lot of frailty and sickness in this line, which is a bit unfortunate because Slow is a great pox riddled lunatic, which is not good at all. What else do we have? We've got you over here. You're just married normally to someone else over here. Yes, a different Earl. Fine, so you've made a bit of a life for yourself, but you suffer from headaches as well because you're frail. Oh dear. Yes, this entire line has not gone well. The Scotland plan may or may not work out. The easiest way to salvage it would simply be to be playing as this guy. Make this guy my actual next in line, Earl Maogan. Because, yeah, if I played as him, I could just find a way to make my wife disappear. But then again, dangerous. I've got great pox. I'm not sure I'll be able to produce children. Oh, the Scotland plan might not quite work out. It's 
very much hanging the balance. I don't want to play as this guy. No stewardship for I'd have to give up too much of my own territory. And finally, there's one last chance that I could try and find a way to salvage the line of John. And that is one of the children of Luna, who is part of House Dunbar, if he was willing to go for... Oh, no. He's definitely not willing to do that. Is that because you're a priest and thus don't go in for this whole marriage sort of thing? Possibly not, no. It would appear he's just not interested in marriage or betrothal at all. I just can't offer him that. Oh, that's such a shame. The line of John has most definitely come to an end. Still, we've got plenty of kids floating around. Loads of kids to keep an eye on. But none of them strong enough that I want to kind of jump in and say, Yes, you. You shall be our next king. The only thing I'd be tempted to do would be maybe put Caddock II, currently acting as the Duke down in Brittany, in as the replacement. But no, I think useless is stronger. And also, what if you just... Okay, why are you a cannibal? Why did that happen? Why are you a cannibal right now? Alright? Seriously, you have got so much money and so much power. No, not, not him. No, 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 I didn't mean to do that. Just meant to go into his screen. Bloody hell, right, so he's just a cannibal now. That's fine, don't worry about it too much. Let's just enjoy the crusade, shall we, as we send uh, just five ships and 200 men in that direction. And, of course, everyone agrees to all those marriages I just suggested. Right, and here comes the collapse of the third crusade, because the second crusade was a total flop as well. Uh, 15,000 guys have shown up and just basically started trashing all of that territory very, very quickly indeed. So, well done. Well done, everybody. Good job. Now, just need to check where the Kingdom of Jerusalem is. Right, there's some of it dotted around here. All I need to do is find a bit of it that I can just get into, very briefly besiege, and then basically just hop on the boat and get straight back out again with the Crusader tag on me. That'll be great. Also, I've just decided mankind is unlovable, which was very sudden. Very, very sudden indeed. And that's a shame, because charitable's good. That's diplomacy plus three. I don't know why I've decided mankind's unlovable. I just flipping have. Right, now, if I just basically step over here and immediately take this area, or just kind of, you know, stand in front of it, is that good enough? All right, let's just get ashore and see if that there is good enough with my 200 troops I've sent over here. Right, you guys, now, appoint king. Oh, no, we can't appoint King John just yet. King John is unappointable. Because... Ah, good. The plague's done. We can now open the gates. Yay! Gates are now open. Boom. Oh, possibly this went a bit nuts because I was in isolation for too long. That's understandable. And this is also a whole bunch of... Well, you guys don't seem that helpful, but then I'm not sure you're actually here for me either. Right, maybe we just stay out of this. So, here we go. I'm just chilling out here. Do I need to do something to help out further? And also, where exactly is this Jerusalem thing you want me to besiege? Right, there's some of it over here. I'm just going to basically go over here, and we're just going to do a bit of besieging there. It's going to be lovely. And there we go. I am ready to storm the walls. Great prestige, piety, and I am now officially, I assume in a moment, a crusader. Where am I, crusader? Am I a crusader? Yes, there we go. Good, I'm a crusader. So martial plus two, church opinion up, personal combat skills up. Right, I think I'm done being a crusader at this point. I've decided I don't want to be a crusader anymore. So simply uh, resign and now break down the ships and then break down these troops as well. Half of them will actually make it home, which is quite frankly impressive. And I'm now officially done with the crusade. Now, that loss of charitable was kind of annoying as well, because I kind of, you know, needed that to help build up my devotion, which I'm very committed to, but I'd like to do it faster, please. And I know probably impatience is a vice, but screw it. I would actually like to get up to the second level at the absolute bare minimum. Still, my children should be turning out pretty well. So during their education, yeah, my children should actually be doing nicely. So this guy is, yeah, he's the eldest, and I assume he's being educated by, yeah, he's being educated by me. I'm just educating both of the actual... I'm not educating you. Why am I not educating you? I feel like I should be educating you. Yes, I shall educate you myself, for I'm good at educating. 
And speaking of being holy and whatever, visiting a monastery in which my order was convened this time, I joined my fellow lay members in dutifully performing all tasks required of us. In the evening after the day's hard work, the abbot gathers all of the visiting lay members and reveals the monastery's great treasure. A great relic that has been safeguarded here for many generations. <laughs> That's nice, I guess. For, uh, yeah, content, which is... Honestly, not spectacular, really. Let us celebrate its glory, I'm paying. Oh no. No, 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 that's a lot of money, sorry. It should be mine. I might actually be planning to steal a fragment of the true cross. That feels like that's not the right thing to do. I shall simply take content for extra piety. Because I could probably do with some extra piety, because I'm not very pious right now, despite being part of a religious order. So, content is just fine, even though it does, ah, uh, that actually cost me intrigue. Which actually kind of hurts me. And even then, it's only 25% chance. But then that will also please everyone in the order. Will that be just a bunch of extra holy points because everyone's going to like me? Or I might be... Um, actually, ambitious would be good. Let's see if I can get ambitious back. And... No, I'm just planning to steal the fragment of the true cross. This is going to end poorly for me. I feel like that wasn't the Christian thing to do. And I didn't even get ambitious either, which is a real shame, because that would have been a real nice little boost there. Actually, you know what else I should do? I should probably stop hunting. I should go over to trying to boost up my stewardship. I could go for business or for rulership. Okay. Business or rulership. Let's go for business for a while, because I'm not sure I've actually done business before. Let's see what strange events pop up when I'm businessing. I should also just get a little bit better acquainted with this new duchy. So, what exactly is the deal in this here duchy? So, my good man, Duke Hellfire, you control three territories directly. You control Duchy of Mercia, then you control... Ah, because you've already got that counter, that actually reduced the amount you could take on. So, you've got Northumbria and Hereford. So, that is, yeah, here and here. So, you control these two territories directly, and you are the Duke controlling these others. So these guys are just going to basically quietly get on with their own lives. They probably don't like me hugely. And obviously they all play by their own rules. And yeah, Duchy of Mercia, line of succession. Okay, so we've got these two territories, uh, Northumbria, and that's... Was that Gloucester? Over there, that's Hereford. Fine. Other than that, we've got Shrewsbury, Warwick, and Leicester. Yeah, a bit of a shame you don't actually get to have the capital. I assume that's the one that's best developed, so that was actually the previous capital of Mercia. So, kind of a shame I actually gave you that. If I just hadn't given you that one, I probably should have just taken it off you, actually. If I just revoked that title just before you got this, you'd probably have got Warwick too, and that would have been better. But no matter, can't change it now. And this is rather nice, actually. Because, of course, this means that Beloved, who this guy thinks is his son, but actually isn't, is in fact, yeah, the well-loved son of King Connor, is actually going to get his own duchy. He's actually going to be important one day. So that's nice. That's very, very nice indeed. That guy will get Hereford. And will you get anything, or does it then skip to uh, Prince Disaster? No, that's going to be Duchy of Mercia and Hereford. So what happens to the other one? What happens to Northumbria? What's the actual rules here? And when I say Northumbria, I mean Worcester, apparently. Right, so what's Worcester going to do? Worcester is going to move over to Beloved. Fine, this place is going to go over to Oh Dear. Right, so Beloved gets one of your two territories and also the entire duchy. And Oh Dear gets the other one. Fine, so standard gavel kindiness. And as for this area, that goes to Beloved too. Which I'm slightly surprised by. I would have thought that would go over to someone else. But maybe it's because you don't actually have any more sons. Because this is... Actually, this is Agnatic Cognatic Gavelkind. So I'm surprised your... Your daughter doesn't get to inherit. Because you've got mine over here. So I'm not quite sure why mine wouldn't be in line to inherit... Lanestar. I mean, I would have thought... Yeah, under Agnatic Cognatic Gavelkind, that should be... Yeah, she is third in line. So why is she not picked that up? Does it play by different rules? Because that's not actually part of the same duchy. So the rules change. Ooh, interesting. I might have slightly fluffed it because, yes, I've introduced a county that's not supposed to be in that duchy into the duchy. And pleasingly, Hellfire might be able to gain more territory in the event that, yeah, this guy just doesn't have any children. Though he's 31 his wife's 17, so they'll probably have plenty of time yet. Also, they're part of the House of Bacon, so I kind of want to play as them now. 
So, having decided that the true cross would be much better safeguarded in my own hands, I am not a good person. I must now tackle the task of how to liberate it. So, <laughs> I can grab it and run. Oh, good lord. Wait for no one to be looking and then running as fast as possible. Okay. Or I could try... Ouch! Wait, those are my own two options? Well, I, I can't afford that. I'd bankrupt myself. Oh, no. Oh, this is... I can't restart time. Those are my only two options. I have to spend either a thousand gold, which I don't have, or it's have to try and grab the true cross and run out of there. So I didn't get ambitious, and now I'm going to fail to have this thing. Like, we have a spy master. All right, we could have done this more... So oh, this is going to be a disaster. Oh, bloody hell. What? Am I about to be killed? Am I actually about to die running out of a church holding a bit of the true cross that's almost certainly a forgery? Because <laughs> I suspect that's what's about to happen to me. And that's not fun at all. And this is... Potentially... Is this good or worrying? Duke Hellfire has formed an alliance with the Duchess of Munster. Two of my dukes are now allies. I'm not sure I particularly like that, actually. Here we go. So the non-aggression pact was achieved by getting Beloved engaged to one of the women in the court over there. And they've immediately turned that into an alliance. I am concerned. Alright, he's got 1,300 troops for now. That'll go up a little bit towards... Okay, he can cap out at about 2,000 troops. She, however, can't do much to... Actually, no, sorry, that's the Countess. That's the Countess. The person I want is the Duchess. She's got about 2,002, so if they were to decide to start causing trouble for me together, then they actually have about 4,000 men. Yeah, I just need to rest up for a bit. I need to let my own troops recover, because I could get a lot more troops out of my domain, but I need to just train them first. It's just going to take some time. Oh, and it looks like the Irish are all joining a defensive pact against me. There is a big defensive pact against me in Ireland right now. I need to be flipping careful. But more importantly, and this bit is very worrying, especially as I do not want to annoy a duke in Austria. This is never a good thing. Deep in the night, I've snuck down into the relic's chamber. Adrenaline pumps through my veins as I take hold of the priceless artifact, savouring the feeling of it in my hands. Suddenly, I hear footsteps and turn around to find Odia. He's already seen me. Right. So, what I need to do now is either surrender. If I surrender, then I have to do public penance. So I'm doing penance for the next 10 years. Diplomacy minus 10. For 10 years. Okay, use their surprise to make a break for it. You're sure you can escape, but I'm basically out of the order. Leave no witness... Oh, bloody hell. Right, so I now have to murder a priest. Now, that would get me greedy, which would actually get me bonus tax. But, if I just stay in the order, then I can get rid of that vice later. Ah, you see. Yeah, leave no witnesses. He needs to go down. This is... This was not the way I wanted this character to go. But now, I've got no choice. Aside from doing public penance for a decade, but I'm not doing that. Leave no witnesses. I've done it. I have the relic and only suffered a minor scratch in the scuffle. It will heal in time. I even managed to hide it from my brothers and sisters. So, are you dead now? You're... Well, he's not dead yet. So, okay, he does die. Or rather, he's going to die. And I've become wounded. So health minus one, personal combat skill minus one. There's a chance that might become infected, which could be a concern. So he's now dead, and nobody knows I did it, which is just magnificent. And more importantly, I have got myself a piece of the true cross. So now I'm super holy. Right, where's my piece of the true cross? Nail of the true cross. So, quality level 3, monthly prestige up, monthly piety up, diplomacy plus 2. Nice. So, I get diplomacy plus 2 just for possessing that. Good. Good, 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 good. Very, very nice indeed. Although, ouch, that truce breaker thing really flipping hurts, doesn't it? Diplomacy minus 5 for quite some time. And yeah, for a holy guy, I'm at this point now up to as many vices as I have virtues. And I'm wounded. Any chance I can call the doctor... 
Uh, for that, no, it's not showing up as an option, so I can't summon the doctor for a wound. That could become infected. I am worried about that as a possibility. I didn't even want to steal it, okay? All I wanted was the ambitious trait, because that's a good trait for a leader. And hello, we've received a message from the King of England, who wants to... Sorry, what? Okay, this is... This is an interesting proposition. This guy absolutely flipping despises me. But he also wants to marry Princess Ida of Denmark, who is... Well, he has to ask my permission because she's in my court. Okay, she's... Oh. She's suffering from the Great Pox. She's a lunatic who suffers from the Great Pox. Yes. You know what? I think you are welcome to her. You are absolutely flipping welcome to He's already wounded. I don't know how he got himself wounded, but he did at some point. Ah, possibly in the Holy Land, because he's been over there at some... That's me! That's me I'm looking at. That's the kick. Okay, he's stressed. He's stressed over there. Excommun... Oh, he couldn't take part in the Crusade if he wanted to. Oh, I got to go on the Crusade. It was bloody great. Really easy. We ate loads of shrimp. It was marvellous. Yes, I'm going to give you her... Because you, you stupid bastard, might just end up catching the great pox off your new wife. Oh, that's beautiful. That's just a thing of loveliness. Oh, darn it. I was worried this might happen. Yeah, I've actually picked up an infection on that wound. That light scratch is not good. Not good at all. Okay, I'm concerned. And that's actually knocked my stewardship down slightly. I could do with some business-related events to uh, boost up my personal stewardship anytime, given I'm actually doing business right now. I'm not giving up another territory. There's no point me giving up another territory right now, because I just have to get it back later, because my default is 8, not 7. It's just temporarily a bit lower. Though, I could do with, yeah, my doctor. Any chance I can just call him up now, because I could really do with my doctor helping me. Nope, still nothing I can do there, unfortunately. I cannot just call the doctor for treatment, because I'm technically not ill. I'm just vulnerable to illness. So, uh, leave it be for the time being. And as soon as we hit October this year, I believe the temple in Devon will be done. And yes, I am actually gaining my devotion up at a decent, if not spectacular rate. In fact, yeah, pretty slow, really. When I was evil... Back when I was King Connor, that was plus 20 dark power. This is like a third of that, so... Oh, it's got slower because I'm losing my virtues because I keep making terrible, not-Christian, virtuous decisions. So, possibly there's a moral in there somewhere, I'm not quite sure. Ah, but here's where things should start getting good. So, this is my son. My eldest son is now actually ready to pick up an education. Now, with the traits that I've got... I should be able to basically just, you know, help him along and give him bonus attributes during his education. In addition, what do I want to do with him? The only things he's really suitable for are martial or stewardship. Hmm. Okay, and I guess we'll go for martial. He's not really ideally suited to either of those things, but... We'll see how you get on with stewardship. Actually, what am I best at? Because I'm... Uh, no, I'm better at martial. So I should go for martial, because then I could potentially do better teaching him how to be good at martial. So, go for that. We'll see how it goes. And here we go. The temple is complete. We're pleased to hear you've completed that. Marvellous. And all in the name of God, built church 300 devotions. That's quite a lot. That is quite a flipping lot. And uh, I can rank up. Boom. Let's rank up because I don't see what else we actually want to do down here. Lovely. So just wait for them to confirm that. And also just double check I don't actually have to right click on my son to do something with him. No, that appears to be a passive ability. The wisdom of St. Benedict or whatever it was. I think that's passive. And I am up to the next level. Marvellous though. Hang on. What is this? Wrong type of holding. Why? What have I done? Why have I built the wrong sort of temple? Ah, it's because I'm not really supposed to actually have that. I should be giving that to someone else. Because that is a temple, and I shouldn't have a temple. So I need to assign someone to that. Uh, okay, I'll just basically go and get a priest from somewhere, and they can have a lovely new temple. 
Here you go, a court chaplain. That's just flipping perfect. In fact, actually, this guy would be better at being my actual court chaplain than this guy would be. Let's just double check. So, uh, Trevor, how good are you? How do you vote right now? You hate me. You're a malcontent. Well, in that case, good news. I'm replacing you with someone who I just invited because he's a pragmatist. Great. He likes me a lot better already. Now go to the Pope and tell him I'm good. This'll do. We've just got some bloke hanging around, not really doing much in Ireland. He's, you know, fairly learned. How do you feel about having your own church? Yeah, you're going to go for that? Hopefully you're going to go for that. So if I just hand that over, I'm no longer holding the wrong sort of thing and everything is good. Right, so now I am an oblatus. So what can I do in... Oh, right. Presented with an opportunity to let everyone be reminded of your rulership. If you wish to mint new coins. Ah, a master of the crafts. All right, lose 100 gold, but gain some prestige. Or debase it for, ooh, 100 gold and 100 prestige, but greedy. I think I'm already greedy, aren't I? So that wouldn't make any difference to me. So uh, wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but I will. Oh, no, it's 25% deceitful, guaranteed greedy. So hopefully I'd miss out on the deceit, but that'd get me 100 gold. Or, you know what? No, give up the gold, take the prestige. Hopefully, that will just be a good thing to do. All right, let's do the right thing, because I'm supposed to be doing the right thing. This is a good king, damn it. A good king. And, oh, spot on. Aspiring trader gets me stewardship plus one, meaning I'm back to where I should be. And once I actually recover from my infection, if I recover from my infection, I'll actually be able to get up to nine. So I'll be able to grab something else and just keep it. And better and better, the threat has actually managed to fade away. So as a result of that, yes indeed, the actual defensive pact in Ireland has worn off too. Beautiful. Nice. Also, just so you know, um, Duke Azolf, the guy who became completely incapable, I assume like in a coma. Yeah, not fit for any kind of work, incapable rulers. So we defeated him in Mercia. He immediately just basically became the Duke of York and he's still there. His council has not taken any action against him, which you'd think they would, really. Oh, but here's interesting. So, King Colin the Usurper is actually attacking England. Oh, the boot is on the other foot now. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 because... Who exactly is... Oh. Flip, did the Templars just show up because you got yourself excommunicated? Oh, I think they did. Oh, I think they flippy did. The Knights Templar are invading England because their ruler is not holy enough. Oh, my. Oh, that's just flipping marvellous. And right now... Oh, this is, this is just too good. This is just too good to be true. England is just falling apart. Although, tragically, even though this guy's excommunicated, I wouldn't just be able to just charge in anyway, at least not without breaking the truce. So I don't really want to do that. So, what actually happens if you decide to just go on a holy war because someone's been excommunicated? Just cause for a war if ever there was one. So, if we win, you gain piety, you gain prestige, and... Why would his excommunication be lifted? We've just beat him up for being, well... What did he actually lose, though? He loses 200 prestige, which doesn't really matter. His opinion goes up, and he... Ah! Okay. Repented sins. He has to abdicate to his son. So he gets brought back in, but I don't think he gets to be king anymore. Fine. And then, alternatively, yes, it's a bad idea if we lose, because there would have to be a lot of money handed over. And speaking of which, are you actually over... Yeah, you're over capacity right now, which works for me. You've actually just been very lucky there. I think one of your guys... Uh, yeah, actually, this guy died of depression. Blimey. Uh, so, yeah, this guy who is up here, he's just basically died and has had to hand over the territory without any children straight back to his liege, Duke Hellfire. So Duke Hellfire now has to find somebody to hand it over to himself. So, that's fun. Now, we are doing pretty well on the old money front, so probably best, as my troops are looking a little bit on the not-spectacular side right now, yes, the keep. So I could actually start getting my keep upgraded a little bit. That is just a straight-up increase in levy and garrison size. Or, just more stables, castle town is just more tax income, jousting list is just a handful of heavy cavalry, and... 
What is this? Why have I decided to take Strong Lass along? Strong Lass is... Strong Lass is one of mine, right? Sometimes it's hard to keep up. I've got quite a few children, bastard or not. Yes, this is the bastard Strong Lass. So as I preach to people about God and how they should try and live their lives, according to... Ah! I'm doing a religious thing with my order. Strong Lass is attentive throughout. I'm sure she's learned some valuable lessons. She is an excellent student. And she can gain either one, two, or three things. Ooh. And also Marshall. She's actually about to gain. Hang on. Let's just go over to her. So right now her Marshall is five and her learning is two. And that goes up to, yeah, seven and five actually. She actually just did pretty darn well out of that. Though I do admittedly kind of wish I'd just done that with my son rather than her. But I guess that's one of the things I get to do. Though yes, this is actually because I am educating her. Well, I should probably stop educating her. Let's actually hand her over to someone else and start educating someone of my own. Strong Lass, you take care of that. All right, beautiful. In fact, yeah, Strong Lass the Elder is now actually educating Strong Lass the Junior. Actually, I was already educating both of these. I thought you could only educate two children. Do I get bonus children to educate? Because I'm... Ooh, I might be, you know. That'd be fun. Let's see if I'm now allowed to assign myself to... Her. And the answer is no, by the looks of things. I am not allowed to assign myself. So, how was I. How was I Strong Lass's guardian? How was I educating her? Because I was, but now I'm not allowed to educate anyone else because I'm already at my child cap of my two sons. I'm educating Iliad and I'm educating this guy whose name I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. So, hmm, interesting. I'm not quite sure why that event triggered for her. Meanwhile, one of the stubborn barons is getting on my nerves. My wife senses my irritation and offers me advice on the matter. Her diplomatic skill has saved me many times before. Okay, she's in fact, yes, yeah, she's a lot more diplomatic than me. That's certainly true. So, local revolt risk minus 5%, which would be quite useful. And I might gain content or I might gain one diplomacy. Content is not bad. To be honest, it's fine. So, well, it's Intrigue minus one, which isn't spectacular. Especially as right now, yeah, my Intrigue is uh, looking dodgy. On account of being caught red-handed and infection minus three. So, oh dear. I can work this out for myself. She doesn't like me. I gain ten prestige. No. Let's see if we gain Content. Content is fine. Honestly, my Intrigue's in the toilet right now. The difference between two and three is not significant. And I believe, yeah, my personal intrigue affects how good my plots are, but state intrigue affects my defense against other people's plots. So, I should be fine. Should all still be okay. And tragically, one of Connor's son's mistake has actually passed away of pneumonia. Very sad, but don't worry, there's plenty more where he came from. Now, as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by presumably myself, yeah, let's just actually upgrade the keep. Here in Cornwall. That's going to take quite some time. But if I move you over to... Can I change you over? Yeah, oversee the construction. Get that done a bit faster if you'd be so kind. And what else can we do here? Nothing much yet. That's very expensive. But it should be worth it. Because this place has a lot of troops in it. Like, that's a big-ass levy right there. In fact, how is my levy looking? My levy is close to being back up to full strength. And I can actually call up, wow, I can call up almost 2,000 men for my vassals. And that would be higher if my council hadn't forced me to basically take money from them rather than anything else. Though, that extra money is welcome. That's an extra 27. I mean, in some ways, in some ways it's not the worst thing in the world. Because uh, what if I just say, okay, you're giving me the money. I'll just use the money to upgrade my own holdings so I just don't actually need any of you stupid bastards. And even better... I'll be more secure against you in the event of any actual trouble that you try and cause me. And we've also got ourselves weddings. Ah, uh, this is just an internal wedding to try and maintain some positive traits. I'm marrying a girl who is quick to a guy who is attractive. So I'm just kind of hoping that they'll end up producing some good children together. Though bad luck, she's actually got cancer very, very young indeed. That is a shame, but give it a go. Do what you can do. And I am worried about my health, by the way. I'm wounded, I'm infected, and I'm 34. Other than that, how's my health? Ah, the hunting dog helps. Right. The hunting dog is good. Good old Tricky the dog. And anything else that's actually helping out my health? Not much, to be honest. Not much at all. Um, that's, no, that's sex appeal rather than anything else. And uh, hello, who do we have here? 
And this was just another internal marriage I arranged. Princess Margaret, whose first husband, yes, the last line of John had died. I just basically uh, married her over to one of my new commanders. Purely because, uh, yeah, he was attractive. So see if we can pass on the genes. Oh, but here's the flipping big one. Prince Maridud has come of age. And, yeah. The Queen of Denmark is totally willing to do this. Not matrilineally. How good is he? He's actually... He's, he's not bad. He is not bad at all. Right, well, this is... This is fascinating. In fact, actually, 11, 8, 11, 8, 14. Maridud. Well, aren't you suddenly interesting to me? So, he's gone over there. The question now is, uh, who is actually the official liege of Denmark? Okay, it remains her. Remains her, absolutely. But, their children, as this is... Ah, this is elective. Fine. So, we don't get a guaranteed child in, but any children that do get produced stay of my dynasty and have excellent claims. So, I should basically have a giant pile of claims, hopefully, coming in. Actually, do my children get automatic claims or do they need to have been king briefly for... We'll keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on the children of Maridord because, yeah, that's pretty prestigious. Enjoy it. Enjoy being the king of Denmark. It's probably a fun thing. Oh... Depressed, paranoid, craven, gluttonous. Right, well, enjoy it as best you can. Also, just update on the Holy Roman Empire. They're still just bloody rebelling. Just for so long now. So long. In fact, actually, the flipping Kaiser's changed. But Jan the Ill Ruler doesn't care. He's still going along with it. So, uh, yeah, we've now got Kaiser Wenzel, the Shadow. Ooh, Intrigue 20 leader, but... Only stewardship of two. Then you get a bunch of bonus domain season emperor level. So, oh, excommunicated as well. Right. Well, this is all fascinating stuff. He's only actually got 5,500 troops. I could literally start a holy war right now and just basically go and beat up the holy Roman emperor just for fun. Also, oh, would you believe? <laughs> Plot twist. France is having another revolt. And the revolt has, like, double the troops of the actual King of France. So, right, the King of France is completely flipping boned. Got it. Though, actually, thinking about that, I should probably just keep a very close eye on, you know, my own people here. So, okay. You're happy working for your Duchess. This Duchess has now come of age. Oh, I should probably actually marry her. Right. She's cool with me. How would you like to potentially get married? All right. How do you feel about some marrying? Oh, I've not really got anyone... Good. Sorry. I mean, I've got... I've got Bernard. No. No, I don't blame you. I wouldn't have minded marrying her into, actually, my family. Okay, what if we actually talk about... Yeah, what if we talk about betrothal? Yes, actually. She will. So, I could basically get this woman's children to be back in my dynasty. Which is probably not bad. In fact, she's actually not bad herself. She is 17 right now. Thing is, if I get a betrothed to make her wait 10 years, we're kind of missing her most fertile years immediately. Right, what are my options? Honestly, I don't want to have to use one of my sons up on her. It doesn't really get me anything. Aside from the fact that one day it gives me the option to just take back the duchy whenever I want without having to reclaim it, just by virtue of the fact I could just, you know, choose to play as the person who's holding the duchy or likely to inherit it. But... For the most part, me and her seem pretty cool. Obviously, this guy absolutely flippin' loves me because I gave him everything he wanted. And as for Kodak II, uh, yeah, he absolutely adores me as well. The question's going to be what happens next generation? Because next generation, it's going to be a bunch of people who I didn't actually give all this stuff to. They're just going to inherit it. For them, it's just going to be normal. So they're not going to be absolutely thrilled with me. Still... I think for the time being, my three dukes seem under control. Um, also, plot twist, what happened to the guy who was my incredibly important son? Um, excuse me. Excuse me, who are you? And what's happening here? Did you... Right, so your wife has basically led you into a revolt. And who exactly are you revolting against? 
Duchess Isabel of the Isles. Right, are you just trying to expand your territory rights now? It's a bad time for it. Norway's just bloody attacked you as well. Bloody hell, Scotland is... Uh, they were looking so good. So good, so very recently. I mean, Scotland's doing a great job kicking the ass of England, if only because I think England's too busy down south trying to deal with uh, all of this. Who's actually got this place under, under siege right now? Because somebody does. Kingdom of... So, the Kingdom of England is occupying... Wait, what? Well, this guy wants me to do secluded penance, which, in all fairness, I probably need to do. That, hopefully, might get rid of a sin. So, go on, then. Do penance as an intrigue action. Though, before I do that, what can I do now? So, I can take a vow of celibacy. Probably a bad idea. I can renounce a vow of celibacy. Okay, so it's not permanent. Or, give spiritual guidance. So, anyone in my realm, or a relative, or a fellow society member, remove a vice. Okay, but only one I don't have. Now, this is quite useful, because I can potentially, yes, yeah, sort out my own children. For example, if my children pick up any bad vices, and this guy's actually picked up temperance, which I'm going to assume he's got, because, yeah, I was instructing him, and I'm super holy and have the Benedictine wisdom and all of that. So, that's kind of cool. I approve of that. Now, my lady, the Duchess of Munster... Any chance you'd be willing for me to, yeah, give her spiritual guidance. So I can potentially, if I wanted to, get rid of Wrathful. There's no point. And obviously I can't clear myself of my own sins because you can't clear sins you yourself have. So you can never use it on yourself in that regard. But, yeah, that's kind of nice. That's very, very useful indeed. Still, let's go over to Intrigue here. Let's see what we've got. So, my options. Vow of Celibacy. What does that actually do? So, well, I'll gain the trait Celibate. Understandable. And then I can actually just give it up afterwards. I can also just donate to charity. Okay, so, ah. I can just swap money for devotion. Okay, and that also gives me Piety Gain Up and Temple Vassal Opinion Up. And 40% chance of losing Greedy. Right, well, that's useful. And as for this Penance business... Okay, what does this actually do? Diplomacy minus one, piety up. I feel like I can do some penance. Sure, I've been asked to do that. So today my seclusion begins. I've selected a simple chamber in the castle where I will spend most of my time during the coming months. Within those bare walls, I shall do my prayers, read the Bible, and contemplate my life and actions. God shall be my companion. Let's see what actually happens. And anytime I want to, I can rejoin the world. Okay, well, let's just, you know, let a couple of events fire first, see what's actually going on here. Oh, also my threat's gone down, so I should probably redeploy my Chancellor to do something more productive for me. Like, yeah, head over here and, oh, this place is actually, yeah, surprisingly tough for a single little earldom, but I may as well just, you know, finish my little collection of Southern Ireland states. The Crusade's still ongoing, by the way. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's reached one of those slightly awkward moments where we're blatantly not going to win it, but, uh, yeah, the people we're fighting against can't actually get the war score high enough that they win it either. So I suspect that's just going to drag on for a bit. Let's just zoom out here. Just in case you're interested in what's going on on the far side of the world, this is what's going on on the far side of the world. I don't know who any of these people are, but if you know this game very well, this might mean something to you. And I've had my first event in solitude. I cannot make sense of this passage in the Bible. The words are archaic and their meaning is deeply hidden by copious layers of symbolism. It would greatly benefit my spiritual development if I discovered the text's essence on my own. Though at this point, perhaps I would be better asking my court chaplain. So, three court chance, I will not figure it out. 26% chance, I will figure it out. So I'm guessing that's a slightly odd looking number. That's like a function of one of my stats. Probably learning. Or, there's no shame in asking for help. So, 65% chance that he will successfully explain it. Or, 35% chance it's unhelpful and I don't understand it. Let's go for the safe option here. I'm going to ask my own chaplain for help. There's no shame in that. He's a chaplain. It's his job. And darn it, I've been unlucky. I've been unlucky there. So, I still didn't make any sense of it. And now, luckily I haven't actually, yeah, suffered any penalties to my character. It's just my relationship with my chaplain is down a bit for a while, so that is a shame. 
And I'm very happy that the infection seems to have gone away. Have I also lost the wound or am I still wounded? Yes, I am actually still wounded. So who knows, it might become infected again. Hard to say. And my priest always talks about the importance of charity and I do give alms to the poor on a regular basis. However, I often feel reluctant when doing so and it brings me shame. While doing penance, I've had plenty of time to think about this. Perhaps I should strive to be more charitable, yes! Because at one point you just stopped being charitable because you literally just declared humanity has no salvation into or something of that nature. It was very dramatic. And I still give, don't I? Surely that's enough. So, 65% chance of dealing with a vice by practicing it moderately without getting noticed. <laughs> it's not a good way. Uh, or, give a giant pile of money over and that might get rid of the vice for good. Ooh, hang on, is this me trying to get rid of um, Greedy, or is this me trying to gain Charitable? Because it's not clear. You know what, I'm going to hand over 166 gold, and... Oh, but I might fail terribly to overcome the vice. Okay. This is a two-thirds chance of success. Hmm. You know what, I'm just going to say I still give, sure that's enough. Because I don't want to know what terrible failure looks like. And... Let's see what I get. Come on, something that seems good. I thought I was happy with my decision, but then guilt came creeping. I should not crave money and possessions in this way. These feelings are not in accordance with the rule of St. Benedict, but I cannot help myself. I make no progress. Right, so I've just had a couple of really unlucky dice rolls so far. Dear, oh dear. Now, my daughter, the eldest of my daughters is ready, and... Right, she's actually looking decent so far. Let's go for stewardship education. That seems good. And better and better. The wound has finally gone away. I've picked up Scar. That's just prestige gain. That's fine. Now, is it time to change over from useless to someone else? Let's have a look, see who else we've got floating around. Because Stronglass has been getting... Oh, Stronglass is getting better and better and better. Strong, shrewd, ambitious, zealous, gluttonous and diligent. Together with a decent education. Yes, Stronglass is in excellent shape, all things considered. Not quite as high on the Marshal as useless, but better in diplomacy and much more learning. So technology gain has been really slow recently. I have noticed that we've started gaining technology a lot more slowly. So having a more intelligent person here wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But she is also older, which is not great. Who else do we have floating around? Ah, Beloved has come of age. This is intriguing. So, Beloved is actually not spectacular, but not terrible either. 813692. So, there's a potential option. Now, Not Mine is 20. And she's actually looking pretty solid as well. Nowhere near as good on the Marshal, but much higher on the stewardship. Higher in learning as well. Intrigue is reasonable. Diplomacy is okay. And for being only 20, that's not bad at all, actually. That is not so bad. Or we could go down the route of Intrigue. Who have we got that's got good Intrigue? Milia would actually be okay, my current Chancellor. Except, sadly, she's suffering from cancer, so there's a good chance she won't be around long enough to potentially be Queen. It would be nice to have a first Queen. We haven't had a Queen yet. And finally, in terms of high learning, yeah, Stronglass comes straight back up to the top there. Although Maradord, the King of Denmark, is floating around as well, which is very, very of interest. You know what? I think we're probably still better served by useless for the minute, but keep an eye on Not Mine. Not Mine could be one to watch. Ah, and I would be allowed to change focus if I wanted to at this point. That would be potentially of interest. Now, is my health still in danger? No, it does not appear to be, so I don't need to rush over to any of the ones that give you plus health. But, theology, that could be of interest. I haven't really gone down that route before, but it is something I am trying to do right now. That gets me health up, which is probably not a bad thing for just warding off disease. Uh, or just straight up scholarship. Unlocks build observatory, starting point for your studies. Theology, religious life of contemplation, prayer and meditation. Learning up, health up. Temple vassals like me more. How do the Temple Vassals feel about me right now? Are they by any chance close of No. They are not close right now to giving me money rather than handing it over to the Pope. But they might... Actually, some of them are. You know what? I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to spend a little bit of time studying 
No, I can't change that. Sorry. <laughs> I thought I could change that. When we hit 11.73, I will go over to that for a little bit. And I'll give some money to charity. All right? I will do all of these things. Group of craftsmen come to court. Ah, last time I did this, I gave them 50 gold and they just basically squandered it. But maybe it'll go better this time. Sound investment. Let's see how that goes. And here's interesting. So back in my seclusion, I'm bent over the Bible trying to make sense of an especially cryptic passage when a faint tap on the door breaks my concentration. I call for my visitor to enter. To my surprise, little Iliad's pale face peeks through the opening. Father, why are you hiding? I miss you. Well, that's very sweet. That's very, very sweet indeed. So, yes indeed, my, I think the youngest of my two sons is... I'm going to say two, I mean three, but we generally don't talk about scandal. How are you getting on, my boy? You are having a, yeah, just a childhood focus of struggle. Age nine at the minute, so three years off actually having your education. Not doing too bad so far. Haughty and rowdy. Okay, interesting, interesting. Now, come here, son, we shall read the Bible. So 50-50 chance of me either successfully teaching him or not, and thus doing a valuable deed according to the rule of, ah, okay. Or, wasting time I could have been contemplating. Alternatively, I've got, ooh, 20% chance of kind. And 80% chance of relationship going up. And 20% chance of becoming close friends. Now, kind is intrigue minus two, but diplomacy plus two. Hmm. It's honestly not that useful to me, aside from the bonus gain I'll get to my own piety. Well, not my piety. The, the special piety. Devotion, that's the one. I don't have time for this. And potentially, oh dear, I might be insensitive and hurt Prince Iliad. No, no, no. Do I go for this, or do I go for the 50-50 shot of doing a good deed? Let's go for... Let's go for a 20% shot at kind. Alright, it's, it's a long shot, but... Go for it, and... Didn't get that. But there's also going to be a question of what the follow-up is with my son in that room. So, okay, I wasn't really expected to get kind. It would have been nice to get kind, though, to add to my diligence and my humbleness. And speaking of all this lovely money I'm getting, I should spend some of this upgrading. Yeah, get the keep being upgraded as well. Lovely. And who are you? Do you want to go and join the Knights Templar? You are. Oh, blimey, you have a terrifying wife. Who even the hell are you? Sorry, you one of my... You must be one of my commanders. Right, your wife is terrifying. Yeah, just go. Go with my blessing as long as you take her with you. Blimey heck. And yeah, over in Lidford, upgrade the keep there as well, if you'd be so kind. Let's just keep upgrading my principal capital holdings. More and more troops, if you'd be so kind. Because we're up to... Yes, there we are. We're almost back up to 10,000, which is marvellously good news. And we've also got ourselves a Master Builder. Prosperity increases. Excellent. Though actually, I think it's already capped out, so not that excellent. And today has been a day of new insights. What happened with my son? I'm not sure what happened with my son, but never mind. Apparently, we just, like, shoved him out or something. So I've had plenty of time to think about my actions, my life, and my place in the world. Uh, things I'd never thought about suddenly became so clear. God has shown me the light. Okay, I've made progress. Good. We're starting to make some progress here. This was a mission. I need to do this. Also, a son was just born to me, and, uh, okay, Eleanor of Strathclyde. Um, I didn't actually get a say in that, but, but okay, this is, this is unfortunate. Why am I having, ooh, she's pretty good. Okay, fine, yeah, I understand why I'm having sex with her, but, like, to have an affair during my period of Christian seclusion and penance strikes me as particularly, you know, not the point. And he wants to be Carberry, does he? Uh, what do we know about him? He's sickly and he's a bastard. Oh dear. Right, you know what? We'll just keep him that way. So, do I want to legitimise him? Not really. And the mother might be humiliated, but honestly, I don't actually... Uh, she's not really... Is she important to me in any way? She has a weak claim on a couple of places up in Scotland... No, I'm going to denounce the child, and then, honestly, I'm not even sure why you're here. Yeah, break up with her, because I really shouldn't actually be... Uh-oh, car break. No, we just established 
Actually, not mine. Not mine. Only the strong survive. All right, seriously, we just said not mine. So break up with her. She leaves the court. Bye, have fun. And a bit more progress. Mark my words, the Bible is truly a book of wonders. Good. I'm making progress fast now. I seem to just be flying through my penance, which is great. In fact, I am actually sitting on a fair bit of money at this exact moment in time. I might just actually go over to Intrigue. Let's donate to charity. So that's 40% chance of shedding greedy. So let's see if we can do that. And wait, how does that actually last in terms of... So 11.72 and... Oh, wow. Okay, apparently I am making progress through my penance very, very quickly indeed. And when I say very quickly, I've been doing this for like a year. Don't know what's happening in the business of state right now, but I'm sure everything's fine. And Carl uh, Bray has uh, quietly passed on. Okay, that's that's sad, but it's fine. The dynasty will survive. We will endure. And the keeper's been upgraded. There we go. So we should just be getting... Uh, oh yeah, is that the first time we've ever passed over 10,000? I'm not sure if it is, but it's nice to be back over 10,000. This period of peace has been just what we needed. And now I've started entering a dreamlike state and speaking in tongues. Great, that's probably good. Oh, hello. Hello. Um, what are you doing? What are you guys actually... Did you guys just decide to attack England? Is, is that what you're doing? Should you be doing that? Are you sure? Are you 100% sure? Like, well, actually, how much has he got? Oh, he's not got much left. Yeah, I can understand why you're potentially doing it. It does just seem kind of fun. But I'm afraid I can't actually join you for another uh, six years. So, have fun. And I'm going to guess that... Uh, yeah, well, actually, sure to be pulled in as well. Because you two are in an alliance. And... What does the mayor want? Okay, requested by a small plot of land in Cornwall. Okay, I do need the gold, and that gives me... Oh, no. No, no, no. Castle tax in Cornwall down 50%. No. Definitely not. Sorry. No. Like, when you said small plot, I thought you meant, like, you know, a little allotment where he wanted to grow some carrots. But no, if you mean, like, enough land that the tax take literally halves, I don't think we're doing that. No, actually. Ooh. This is a nice little change, isn't it? That actually, when I see the army of Mercia on the march now, it's on my side. Love that. 3,500 troops there and another 1,600 there. Yeah. These guys are starting to get a little bit on the, uh, the strong side, actually. These guys are getting a bit on the strong side. I need to make sure I'm always floating, like, at least 6,000 troops at all times, just in case they all decide to join up against me. Though, actually, that's just them. How much do you have... Right. At this point, if all my dukes decided they wanted to be friends together, then, yeah, there's actually a real, real concern that they could actually overpower me. I need to be careful. Also, who don't you like and who are you trying to get? That's my- wait, what? No. No, no, no. Drew- oh, no, not Drew! We like Drew. Drew's the flipping spy master. No! No, 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 no! I was like suspicious there as to why my wife wanted me to spend less time with my wife, but I guess that does make sense in retrospect. Yes, it wasn't actually my wife, it was someone else. And yes! Oh, flipping dear. So the forces of Monster and Mercia now work for me, and they're just kind of going around and doing their own thing. And... What do we get? 200 devotion. He's decided my mission is complete. Do I have to choose to come out of... Ooh! Plague! Plague! Shut the flipping gates! Yep, seal it, seal it, seal it. What plague is this? What is going on here? And... My wish to become a better Catholic has led me to the rule of St. Benedict. Yes, we were already a member, but whatever. I have found truth in the words. This is truly a path worth treading. I am a doubter no more. Ah, I lose Cynical. Which is kind of a shame. I like Cynical, but okay, fine, what have you. Now, do I need to manually exit my seclusion, or is it officially over? Uh, no, it looks like it's all fine. Also, apparently I have a, a loan out uh, with the Jews. So we'll pay that back. And I could try donating to charity. How am I doing as a person? I'm not doing bad. I'm getting there. I mean, my intrigue is now in the toilet, unfortunately, because I'm being caught red-handed. How long does that actually last? That is only a couple more years. Okay, that is coming to an end now. And, oh... The Queen Mother is no longer steward. I'm guessing she just died a natural death. 
Okay, that is that is sad. Who do we want to actually bring in? Ooh, strong lass would do a competent enough job, and she would be a loyalist. I could do with more flipping loyalists on this council. There's, yeah, a loyalist and two pragmatists. I think that's the bare minimum I need to keep this going. And this is nice and cheap. Castle walls up to castle walls too. Actually gets levy size plus 5% for not much money. Yeah, get on with that. Lovely. And England is now being dogpiled by Scotland, by the Knights Templar, and by Mercia. Their former actual duchy is now invading them just to basically just screw with them. And, uh-oh. Oh, dear. Strong lass. No. No. Hang on. Which epidemic is this? How bad is this right now? That is consumption. And also, which which strong lass are we talking about? We're talking about, oh. Right. Bastard's daughter. This is my daughter. The bastard. Oh, dear. I mean, hmm, she's not going to be thrilled, but the other children need to be saved. I'm so sorry, but you are the bastard, and you're not looking that promising. Also, I've just kicked her out, but now there's a second event, so I guess we can also try and treat her, but like, not here. Yes, call my court physician, try and treat her anyway, or something. And my wife is pregnant again, lovely, and... Uh, Colin, what would you like? Oh, you'd actually like to marry my 13-year-old daughter. It's kind of weird, actually. That is kind of weird. How about I suggest something else to you? Like something not weird. Listen, I've got this terrifying-eyed woman. I don't even know why she's here, but no, tragically not. Yeah, sorry, I'm not willing to do that. That's, that's not cool. Though, actually, this would be... That'd be a non-aggression pact that could become an alliance. That's of interest. Oh, at some point did you actually finally take Caithness over into Scotland? Oh, you did as well. Well done. And I just don't feel lustful anymore. The young women no longer have the power to seduce me. Good. It's probably good to get rid of that at that point. That gives me, yeah, a little bit less intrigue, bit less fertility. The Christian church likes me more. I kind of wouldn't mind the Christian church liking me more. So let's get rid of that. And I can also just become a close friend to a bishop who's apparently locked up somewhere. He's actually been imprisoned up in Scotland. So I think this is friendship. Yay, friends. And here's where things get interesting. My eldest son has just hit 16. So this is the first child I've ever raised under the effect of the Benedictine order. So he's supposed to be good. Well, colour me distinctly flipping underwhelmed. Sorry. He's temperate, dull, and skilled tactician, and literally nothing else. Blimey. Look up bland in the dictionary, and that is the picture you shall see. That is truly flipping underwhelming. Ah, but, because I tried to educate him with that, I now actually have to ask him how well his own little religious journey is going. So he came and told me about how he has strived to follow the rule of St. Benedict and become a better man. He talks vigorously of all his prayers and time spent doing penance in his strive to become closer to God. He seems to have been a great success. He is honest. Okay. So that's, that's somewhat good at least, but still, you are, you're underwhelming, kid. Ah, but as this is now my eldest son and he's only just come of age, there are a lot of good options for him. Including people who could get me non-aggression packs with the Byzantines. Now that's interesting. Or, there's always Scotland. There's always Scotland itself. Scotland as my ally. Now that... That I think could be very, very much of interest. Yes. So, one option is... Apparently, the Duchess of Munster would now be willing to marry me. Now I've come of age. She is actually pretty decent, and that would secure a non-aggression pact and potentially an alliance between us, just to make absolutely 100% sure that she doesn't turn on me. Plus, she's actually got a not terrible pile of troops. If I'm actually just her liege, then all I get to do is raise the vassals. If we're allied, she actually will come and join me properly. With her, whatever it is, like 3,000 odd troops. I think it's less than that. I think it's more like, uh, it's probably more like, yeah, 2,000. But that is not an insignificant amount, an extra 2,000 men. 
especially as I'm not the one paying for them. It's also interesting to note that, blimey, France is getting powerful down in Spain as well. Yeah, France that just keeps changing hands, and Holy Roman Empire is currently racked by strife, as is Poland. There's no obvious big nearby faction for me to urgently marry into. Like, I've already got Sweden on side for the time being. Denmark working on them. I've already got a guy who's king of Denmark. Norway's a possibility, but they're not looking that strong. I might, might just want to basically, yeah, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to marry her. She likes me. We'll be happy together. Everything will be okay. I've got plenty of other children to marry off to other people if need be. Right, she is good with that. Go over to her. And can we actually form a formal alliance? Or can you not form alliances with your own vassals? Is that not how it works? Right, apparently vassals can form alliances with each other, but I cannot form an alliance with a vassal. That is a shame. And yes, indeed, the Knights Templar, right there. England has been invaded by the Knights Templar. Dear, oh, bloody dear. And actually, that might explain what's actually going on with, yeah, the, uh, the building I couldn't siege. It's because, apparently, the Knights Templar just have a permanent base located inside England. Fascinating. Also, I've just actually picked up a new child, a son, called Arispo. Who is secluded with his courtiers. Fine, no worries about that. Obviously, we know about that. I like the name Arispo. I'm keeping that. So, my next son is called Arispo. Lovely. And this time, after the failure on the last occasion, the craftsmen have actually flipping worked out for me. City sector plus 10% for 10 years. Prosperity of capital up slightly, though I think it's already capped. And 100 gold. Very, very nice indeed. And I'm actually getting better and better at business. I'm up to trader. Stewardship plus two. Oh yeah, this is just the flipping thing. Right, we've hit April 1173. And this is where my cunning plan comes to fruition. So, I want to move from a business focus to a theology focus. Temple vast opinion plus 20. Alright, now go over to intrigue. Donate to charity. Hopefully, well... Guaranteed Temple Vast Opinion plus 10, and hopefully get rid of Greedy. And lovely, they're happy with that. Lose 100 gold, gain 100 devotion. Piety might lose Greedy. Not sure, did I lose Greedy? I did lose Greedy, got rid of Greedy, so I've got rid of all my vices right now. I am virtue all the way, but more importantly, by any chance, oh yes. Oh, look at this. Oh, look how suddenly all but one, one of the bishops in my entire territory are all like, oh yeah, we flipping love you. And I bet this guy would give me some money. He'd give me 400 for 100 piety. I mean, that's that's got to be worth it right there. Let's just see if he's willing to accept that. And 400. Nice. Flipping nice. Any chance you're willing to do it again? No. Uh, sadly, he will not accept my offer on this occasion. You can't just do that over and over. But, all of these guys still love me, because that does not actually affect their opinion of me. So as a result of that, let's just go over to the next month. That should be a massive increase in the tax take, because there are a lot of bishops. And that is... Okay, when I say massive increase, it wasn't that huge. It was still nice. I'm just sitting on flipping 900 gold right now. And it's time for Prince Iliad to pick up an education too. He's not looking spectacular, to be honest, but we'll see if maybe the education turns out better for him, if we're very, very lucky indeed. And in fact, I can't actually even afford to do any more upgrades in my home territory around there, so I guess we can probably do some, yeah, we can do some nice, cheap upgrades across the board. This is going to be, yes, yeah, screw it, get on with it. Just basically upgrade everything across the south of Wales. There we go, three big upgrades just kicked off there. Three really, really massive upgrades, and uh, I'd say we're in good shape. My character is looking good. I have recovered. I have donated money to charity, and honestly, I'm starting to wonder if I'll actually make enough money back from donating to charity just through the increased taxes off the church. It's worth me constantly doing. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. My kingdom is looking secure. My vassals love me. And more importantly than anything else, England appears to be on fire. So, so on fire. It's just 
beautiful, you stupid, stupid bastards. And apparently the crusade ended in a white piece. It's quite frankly amazing, but a bit of a black day for Christianity in general, apparently. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So Scotland's beating you. Uh, the actual... Oh, the Knights Templar are not doing so well because they literally sent only 200 guys. Uh, however, Mercia might actually win. I'm not sure they're going to get anything from it, but uh, you know what? Screw it. Well done to you. The important thing is, they're just basically beating up England for me. So in four years' time, when it's time for me to go and beat up England again, England is not going to have enough. Not even remotely enough. And meanwhile... Oh, France has put itself back together. Who's the King of France now? It is... Right. Someone who was... What happened to you? Are you dead? No, you've just been deposed. Fine. There is now a child on the throne of France. But, on the plus side... Holy Roman Empire, you should take notes. France has revolts all the time, but it puts itself back together very quickly. You have been having this revolt, I swear, for 50 flipping years. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would say we're actually looking good. King Hector has become a good man. A very good man. After a bit of a shaky start in which we went to war with everything, King Hector is a good man. And we will leave things off for the time being. <laughs> Next time, well, I think it's time for another little slugging match with England. We need to figure out what we're going to do with them precisely. I need to keep an eye out for who's potentially got any claims that we can actually push. No one in our family right now, we will have to see whether we can just find someone to parachute in potentially. Because it might be time for this bastard to die. In fact, hello, what's this right here? What do we have? I've just actually located someone who's got a claim on the Kingdom of England. Oh yes, someone with a claim on the Kingdom of England who's willing to move to my court. Who's not married. Oh, oh, I think we've got ourselves the beginning of a plan here. This is a very, very marvellous beginning of a plan. Oh yes. Here we go, just very conveniently sitting around oversight. Age 21 of my dynasty, not really doing anything, not particularly good. How about a nice little matrilineal marriage between you two? How about that? Yeah, congratulations. That's now what you're doing. You, my good man, you, my good man, are a ticket to good things. Because guess what England's gone over to? Primogeniture. Oh, yeah. Oh, flipping yes. Ladies and gentlemen. We've got a plan. We can screw up England for good with that. That is coming up next time. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Crusader Kings 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. No, this no, this no, guy's no, enjoying no. that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. <laughs> oh my god. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky. That's look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear! And then oh, in come the chariots! Yeah.